Hello, everyone. Barbara from All Brands, and I have a very, very, very awesome special guest and great friend of All Brands. Uh, today, her name is Carrie Cunningham, and we are going to be sewing face masks. She is a wonderful person. I actually got a face mask from Carrie recently, and I love to wear it. Um, this is it. And um, uh, so she's very um, active on our social media and she's, oh my gosh, so many things, so many great things. So she's uh, an educator for Embroidery Garden. Uh, she's been sewing forever and she's an educator and she has a blog and she, all of this information is in the notes um, of this video. And she also started an organization last year that uh, it's 18 ladies currently, but I'm sure after this video, it'll grow. They're sewing uh, dresses for orphans in Africa. So uh, I'm so excited to have her and to have her show me how she made this wonderful, wonderful mask. Carrie Cunningham from Endless Designs by Carrie. And, oh, if you're watching, tell us where you're from. Give us a shout out, give us some love. And, here she is. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Intro, you almost made me cry. <laughs> oh my gosh, you made me cry talking about the food pantry before, before we started the video. Lauren says, uh, so talented. And, I love you, Lauren. <laughs> and Arnell, who watches a lot. Hi from Salem, Illinois. And you're from Illinois, right? I am from Illinois. I am. I'm in Elk Grove Village, so I am Northwest. Oh, wonderful. Great. Yes. <laughs> so I want to thank you again for this mask that you made me um, that was so kind and unexpected um, <laughs> with this <clears throat> insert for a filter. And it's not yes. One of my favorite prints that you have done, because you always like make these beautiful garments that you post on Instagram and, and your Facebook. <laughs> uh, and one of my favorite outfits that you have is this, um, it's like black in the center and it has the animal print on the side. Yeah. And then you wear That's it with- That's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> you wear it with bright red pumps and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> I'm like, that is so cute. I love it. <laughs> so I never like, got around to making the red skirt. I was supposed to make a red skirt to go with it, and I never got around to it. <laughs> my God. It's so awesome, just the way that it is. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your company and what you do and the organizations that you work with? So I'm terrible at dates, but I'll give you a I'll give you a rundown. <laughs> I started sewing when I was 11. I came home from we were supposed to start in sixth grade on the sewing machine, and all the way up to the last day of school, I never got to use the machine. So I came home in tears, and I ended up going around the corner to my great aunt's house and using her treadle machine. So I tell people that I treadled my entire summer away that year. <laughs> so. I made garments that had like the basic things that we need, the skills that we need today. I made a button front shirt with a collar and cuffs. I made, and I had no fear because I didn't know you were supposed to be afraid of it. <laughs> I made an apron with a gathered apron with pockets and a skirt with a zipper. I didn't know you were supposed to be afraid of all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so by the time I got to high school, I was the only girl who could sew in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, so I started my, um, I, I kind of went away from sewing because I, because of family issues. And then I came back to it around 2007. And um, that's when I started embroidery. I discovered that and came back to sewing with a fury, like trying to make a for all the, I felt like I was making a for all the time I'd missed. Um, and then I met, um, or I got involved with machine embroidery 2008, started my business in 2008. And um, the ministry that you talk about, I just started that last April. So that was quite exciting. People was were excited about it before we even started. And I won't make you cry, but I was in tears that whole week before <laughs> because of all the things that were happening around it. 
And the day of, about a quarter to or so, nobody was there. And I thought, well, I'll just make dresses by myself if nobody shows up. And five minutes before, all these ladies started pouring in with their machines and their fabric and fabric donations. And it's been, it's been a pretty awesome ministry to see girls. So we sent out about 207 or eight somewhere in their dresses so far from April till we had to stop. 208. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> and how many, how many ladies are sewing the dresses? So, so it's about, so the 18 is the kind of the core group, but on the average we have 12 to 15 people show up and we were doing it only once a month. We, were just, <laughs> we made all those dresses in once a month, a couple hours a day. Oh my gosh, you're talented. <laughs> yeah, and some, some, were beginner, some were beginners, had never made dresses, and some were beginners, hadn't sewed in years. Uh, one lady came one night and finished her first dress that night. And, you know, they, they didn't do a lot on their first night because I had to teach them how to make the dress and talk about the dress and all that. Um, but they got really good at it. Like over the Christmas holidays, they would come back with 10 or 12 dresses that they made <laughs> over the holidays. So. Oh it's God. it's a it's a really good ministry, and I like the ministry because they don't uh, everything that you send them goes. There's even if you send them money, it goes. It becomes part of the postage or whatever the needs are. They don't use the money for administrative fees, mm -hmm. which is really nice. <laughs> so how do people get involved in that? Like, if somebody wants to start helping with that, so the organization name is littledressesforafrica.org. You can find them easily on, uh, they're on Instagram as well, I'll put but that you can down. find them easily on Facebook, website. And it's www. Okay. So how did you organize getting them sent over there? So what we do is you, um, so there's a few stores that used to, I'm not sure if they still do it, but you would be able to take your dresses to them and they would ship them. They actually go to Michigan and everything is shipped from there. Um, so you just box up whatever you have. And, and it took me a while, but I figured out that about a hundred dresses will fit in a box, <laughs> oh a good God. size box. So that's why I know it's about 207 or so. Uh, but we also sent underwear, panties for the girls in yeah. one of the boxes, one of the past boxes. Um, but yeah, on the website, they have the pattern for the dress or the instructions to make the pattern. And they also have a pattern for what they call bridges for boys. So you can make shorts for the little boys if you want to. Oh um, I, I personally find that the shorts create a little bit of waste where if you make the dresses, you get a two by six piece of waste. That's all your waste. Two inches by six inches. So it's like a no, I call it a no waste ministry for us because we can make the dresses any, any length. So, yeah. Thank you for what you do. Oh my goodness. And you already made me cry on live. Oh. So. <laughs> There's some, if, you, if you look at the Facebook page, you see some gorgeous pictures of these little girls wearing these dresses and the same with the little boys wearing the britches. So check out their, wake, their Facebook page and look at some of those photos. It's really nice. And I'm always looking to see if that one of our dresses is that one of our dresses, but I haven't spotted anything yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We're so lucky to be in this awesome community of sewers that are yes. giving back to people that are in terrible awesome. situations and giving them like an ounce of hope, you know? Exactly. So, okay. Whew. Let me give you some uh, comments because we've been getting a lot of shout outs in the meantime. Um, okay. okay. My Esther is actually watching from Austria. Hi, Yvonne. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Libby Hoffman. Hey, thanks for watching. She says hello. Hi, Libby. Libby. Oh, my gosh. And I'm sure you know all of these ladies, too, because we all comment together in our <laughs> fun groups. Sherry Crawford says hello there. Dale City, Virginia. Thank you for watching. Lauren says hello from Louisiana. Hi. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Debbie says full time RVer watching from Campground in Alabama. Oh, my gosh. Oh, nice. 
So yeah, um, not only are you awesome in doing all this philanthropy, but you're also an amazing sewist and you have oh, a you. in your studio um, and you made me this mask and that's what we're going to show today. But also we're going to be going live again on Thursday with Carrie and doing a sew along of my most favorite outfit that you've ever sewn <laughs> because it's so sassy and fun. <laughs> um, it's the, it's, and it shows like some, we're going to talk about like pattern alterations. I have it. I have it here behind me. Let's see. Here it is. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. I love it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh God. Don't look at the fabric. Don't look at the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. So you know what? It's also my favorite. <laughs> I love how easy this is. Like, I'm not going to lose it because it can stay right. on my neck until I'm ready. Like when I'm driving, you know, you right. wear your mask when you drive, but you can if you want. Um, but you just <laughs> easily can just strap it on just like that. Yes. So you can strap it around your ears behind your neck. You can strap it higher like you have it. And if you have okay. a ponytail or a bun. You could tie it up there. The strap, the strings are long enough. The tie is long enough. Yeah. So I love it so much. You can't you see I'm smiling <laughs> very big under this mask. <laughs> I thought I'd surprise you with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So why don't we share with everyone how you made this amazing mask? And um, okay, could you show us that? I can. So this is the pattern. That, oh, that we're using. Um, I'm gonna make you full screen, so I'm gonna hop out for a yeah. second. So this is the pattern that we're using um, and I'm making it free or offering it free on, it's in my group posted already, the link is there and then Barbara will post it in other places that we need to post it. Um, so it's, it's pretty simple, it goes pretty fast. You cut two pieces of the fabric, it's the entire piece. And then you cut one piece of the, or two pieces of the lining. And the lining is this, if I can get this right, it's this shorter line here. So your lining is shorter than your overall pattern. So that's how you get started. Um, and I'm going to talk about print matching in a little bit, but that's how you get started. So cut that out. I like to use a rotary cutter. And if I'm doing a lot of them, which I am, I use um, a marking chalk to draw around it and then just cut around the marking chalk. It's easier than trying to pin the pattern over and over again. And speaking of pinning the pattern, here's the other option. Is I buy these from the dollar store. They're chopping mats and it's two in a package for a dollar. And I use those for my templates. And now I've got a sturdy template that I can cut around. So again, I don't That's have to pin. Smart. I never yes. that. <laughs> that chopping mat idea is from my friend Rhonda from a few years ago when we were making rain snowballs, when we first started making snowballs. And she was using the chop mat to make her templates. Reen now sells Segrist? the templates, but, it, sorry? Rhonda Seacrest? Yes, yes. Oh, great. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah. I got the idea from her. So I have these things cut up into all sorts of small items. It works perfectly for small items. Oh, cool. I'm going to update my shopping list. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've already cut out um, the mask and the lining. So this is my mask. I'm making the leopard print again. And I'm going to add a red lining to it. I'm going to use red thread so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, are we ready to get started, Barbara? Oh yeah, I'm ready. We're ready, Are you ready, ready to solve? Okay, so Let's I'm gonna I'm gonna go full screen so you can shift your camera, everybody. And she's gonna give me a big thumbs up when she's ready to go. Oh Rhonda, oh, Rhonda. thank you for watching, Rhonda. Let's see. She says, I bought a case of those things, LOL. And Michelle says, brilliant. It is a brilliant. Okay. I think I think I'm ready. All right. Can everybody see? That is, I love this fabric. Oh my gosh. I'm like totally matching. That's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's like. I'm going to make you another one with the red lining. <laughs> <laughs> <Good taste. laughs> 
Okay, I'm gonna hop out and you could show everybody how you sew this awesome mask. Okay, so you, you notice it has a point at the top. Don't sew from the point because it'll go down in the machine. Machine will eat it. Ask me how I know. Sew from the bottom. Start at the bottom and go around this curve. And it's just truly a curve. And the, the pattern doesn't show a seam allowance. Your seam allowance is one quarter of an inch. So it's included. Don't add to it because you'll make it too big and it won't fit anyone. Except, I don't know, other people, but not you. Um, so I like to backstitch at the, at the beginning. Just a little bit. And then go around this curve. If you can't measure the quarter inch, use a quarter inch foot. Quarter I have inch one, Carrie. Do yeah. Everyone? Yes, please. Okay, so this I is have for brother, but for Juki, it will be very similar. Um, it is a, there, it looks like this. Yeah, they're interchangeable. <laughs> Oh, they are. Yes. So most snap on <laughs> feet, you just have to turn the hand wheel to make sure that the needle goes through the hole correctly and it should work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, this foot is awesome. If you don't have a quarter inch foot for your sewing machine, I will include this in the link below. Perfect. So um, my foot actually has a quarter inch mark and I've done so many of these and so many other things making quilts to that that I'm kind of used to where it is. But again, the quarter inch foot is perfect for this. So just go around the curve. Try not to make any points, just keep curving. And then when you get to the end, do a back stitch. It doesn't eat your fabric there. It only eats your fabric if you start at that point. So this is what you end up with. So you end up with this. It looks like that. And then this is the right side of it. And what I like to do is to finger press it. I actually tried to press these with my uh, ham, but it was just too cumbersome. The ham wasn't small enough to get in here. So I just finger pressed this, this entire seam to one side. Doesn't matter left or right. So finger press that, put that aside, and then I grab my lining piece, which is shorter. It's actually one inch shorter than the mask on the side, not the bottom. And then I just uh, do the same thing here. Do my back stitch, the quarter inch seam allowance. Around the curve. When I get to the end, I'll do a back stitch again. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy. <laughs> it's pretty we, easy. We did have a question. Where is the pattern going to be posted? So after this video, I will post this to the content section as a link. And um, is it, do you think it's on your website, Carrie, or? It's not on my website and I'm not going to put it on the website. It will be in my group and then we can just post it in other groups. Okay. So, and yeah. Your, your group name is? My group is Endless Designs by Carrie Sewing Group. Okay, and I'll include a link in the notes there as well. Everything is Endless Designs by Carrie. <laughs> So on the mat, on the lining, you finger press that seam the opposite from what you did on the on the mask itself. So the mask, I finger pressed it to the right, and the lining, I finger pressed to the left. So they're going in opposite directions, and that's intentional. And I'll talk about those seam allowances again in a little bit. And now what you do, if any of you cultures know what nesting is, you'll nest those two seams together. So let me see if I can show you here on the camera. You have the lining seam is there, the mask seam is there, they're facing opposite direction. And what you want to do is match those seams up. And uh, in quilting language, it's nesting because you can actually feel it when they kind of connect. So match those up. And these are the, I only use two pins for this whole project. So one pin goes here at the top and then flip it over so you can see the bottom. And again, this is your bottom here. Oops, that's the bottom of the mask there. 
So I double check the top to make sure I got my seams going the same direction on each piece. And I nest them again. And I use my second pin. And I really do only use two pins. So oh. do you prefer pins or clips? Because I know everyone has a different opinion on that. So this is pins because you have these two seams which are only a quarter inch. And if you clip them, I mean, you could clip it if you want. Not sure what would happen. I think um, the, I, I think, tend to I see think, the garbage clippers prefer pins and quilters I prefer see the clip Yeah. So, speaking, so I'm, I got a little bit ahead of myself. So I'm going to unpin this and you'll get to see me pin it again. And I'm going to only work with the lining. I went one step too far. Sorry about that. So we're back to the lining that's sewn around the curve. Now we're going to take these sides and I fold it back three eighths of an inch. I think you can see three eighths of, of an inch and then double it. So it looks like that. And then I'll stitch these down. So what I'm making when I do that is, let me get a sample mask here. So the raw edge I'm, is I'm creating, I'm, I'm getting rid of the raw edges on the lining. So that's folded to the wrong side. So it's so just a double fold. So is the seam allowance facing you from the middle of the insert or is it facing the machine? It's facing up. Okay. That makes sense. I've done that a few times myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed up that part. <laughs> if, when I did my first, my very first sample, I did it and it rolled it to the right side of the lining, and I couldn't figure out why it looked weird. <laughs> Guess who's <laughs> to joining today? Carrie Reed. Hi, hi Reed. I saw her face hi. pop up. Hi there. <laughs> So um, actually, Carrie is an educator for Reen for Embroidery Garden, and she's asking, you're making a casing, them. right? Yes. Correct? Yep. Okay. I love working for Reen. <laughs> okay, so here you don't need to backstitch because this is going to be enclosed later. So you'll see me do this on both sides. And I just come off. And my Juki has a thread cutter, so it works. So again, you're going to take it, here's the wrong side of your mask, and you're going to fold it over once and then twice. And that's what you're going to stitch. And it's three eighths, in, three eighths of an inch. And again, you don't need to back stitch. Okay, so this is what your lining should look like now. Here's your full side on the wrong side. And here's our right side. So now we'll go back to the pins and we'll pin the mask together. And for anyone who missed it, when I when I stitched this curve on the mask, I did a finger press because it is really hard to get in there with an, with an iron or a ham. So I just finger press them and I finger press them in opposite directions. So, and it doesn't matter which way. So if the lining goes one way, the fabric of the mask itself needs to go the opposite way. And there's my first pin at the top. And don't ask me why I do the top first. I just, <laughs> it's just a rhythm that I've gotten into. And then I'll do the same thing at the bottom and I'll make sure those Seam allowances are going the opposite direction. So I like to check the front, the top, to make sure if it's going right, that the bottom also goes right. And then I'll just put a pin here. And I don't know why, but I like to start at the top and work my way down. So I'll go to the top. You don't this, really, and this is why I don't use a lot of pins. This looks fabulous. I love the colors. Yeah. Let me get you back so over here. <laughs> That is so this so is why cute. you don't need a pin because if you got this pin here, then this is just going to curve nicely and end there. You don't really need that all these pins. And you know what I like about this cut, Carrie, that you made? My glasses don't fog up because there's enough of a dip here for you know yeah. it not to get in. Yeah. 
So, And I've had people that have had some medical concerns about wearing masks or how to wear masks or what the mask required or what was required. Um, and I've gotten really good feedback from them saying the nurse loved it. It was perfect. Uh, it fit the way the nurse wanted it to fit them, to fit their patient. And um, because of the drawstring, it fully encloses the side of your face. And then this little curve here, which is almost invisible. Uh, where is it? You almost can't see it. But there's a little curve at the bottom here and it goes up. And that curve makes that mask fit under your chin. So I see a lot of people that make them and they put darts and other things under here to make it fit. But this curve allows that to fit. So we are gonna do the top first. So you're gonna sew right from the edge of where you end, where your mask ends, where your lining ends. So you're gonna, you're actually attaching the lining to the mask now. And again, it's a quarter inch seam. Don't go larger. If you go smaller, your mask is gonna fall apart. If you go larger, your mask is not gonna fit. So here I definitely do back stitches because this is the part of the mask that gets a lot of wear. Where the uh, where it intersects with the lining, so I do a couple back stitches there. And she said, "Where is here?" We do have a comment, Sorry? Kira. She said that she made a mask with similar construction, and she surges the sides of the lining with the rolled hem. So that's good. Good idea. You could do that. You could definitely do that. Yeah. And I tried surging them and it just uh, was a little bit time consuming. And then um, I didn't try roll him though. That's a thought. But yeah, surging, I, you don't quite, you, you can't quite get that quarter inch exact to be exact. Yeah. And Michelle says so. leopard is my favorite. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Michelle, I agree. You have to make your own, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> so listen closely. <laughs> So when you get to this intersection where the the front seam, that first one we did was the curve of the nose. So with those front seams, make sure that your two pieces are going the opposite direction. Make sure your, you know, it doesn't buckle up or turn up on you. And then it looks like because it's a point, you would think that you would pivot. Well, when I was testing these, I did pivot and I didn't like it because it created this weird point here on the nose and I didn't like it. So even though it's cut in a pivot, when I get to this portion of it, I just curve it. So go around the curve, keep your quarter inch. That's something that I need to learn a lot more about in garment sewing. So thank you for making that um, observation. For sewing curves? Yeah, uh, for garment construction. So I have a lot to learn there. We'll get that in my top. <laughs> I can't wait. My top has princess things. <laughs> yes. So you have some colors. So y'all, next Thursday we're going to be doing a sew along with Carrie, and um, so I'll post that uh, tomorrow on our Facebook. Okay, so I did the top. That's what it looks like. It's the top of the mask, and I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if you can see that curve. There, yeah, where I didn't pivot. I used to pivot here. I probably did like 12 of these before I ended up with what I liked in, as far as the pattern goes. So you do the same thing with the bottom. I'm gonna start right where the mask starts. And I do so with the mask side up so I can see these seams. I'm sorry, with the lining side up. And again, it's a quarter inch. And this time it's the curve that's gonna go the other way. And don't ask me, I know one is concave and one is concave, I don't know what you said. <laughs> so we do have another question from Kira. She was asking uh, what your template is made of. Oh, this is um, this plastic. It's a chopping, <laughs> this chopping match from the Dollar Tree, from Dollar Tree. And it's two in a package. I got the package folded in half. Let me open it up. So it looks like that. And they are in the kitchen section of Dollar Tree. And it's two in a package. 
And they're really nice because, you know, I can use this over and over and over again because it's this plastic. It's actually disposable chopping mats. And this idea came from Rhonda Segrist, who's on here <laughs> a few years ago when we were making Reen's uh, snowballs. And that's before she created her own template. She now has templates, but we were making our own templates. And that's what Rhonda came out with. And we all went out and bought these. I probably bought six at one time, and then I bought more, and then I bought more. And Rhonda says she bought the whole case. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so crafty. <laughs> it's all about that sharing ideas thing, right? <laughs> all right, so we're almost at the uh, center point for the bottom. I'm going to take my pan out, kind of fill this, make sure everything's going in the right direction. And then I'm going to come around and make this a curve again. No pivoting here. Just go around the curve. Make sure you don't get any puckers. I almost got one there. And did you see what I did to get rid of the pucker? I just lifted my left and needle down and lifted my foot up. And I got rid of that little pucker. Just come around this curve. You know what and I love sometimes... to use? Mm -hmm. My knee lifter. Yes. Yes. Well, I make, I make multiples of these, so I definitely use my knee lifter at that point. Because <laughs> <laughs> I chain stitched them together. And the knee lifter is perfect for that. So sometimes when you get to this intersection, especially at, at the top, it doesn't seem to be a problem. At the bottom, sometimes you get um, where the needle, the machine just doesn't want to go over that. And if you have this foot, I'll show you when I'm, in a minute. But this foot has a black button on it. You push that button and it'll go over that hump for you nicely. Just push it one time and it goes over. to the end, back stitch again. So here's the foot. And can you see the black button? There it is. So when you get to, just before you get to a hump, and this is on anything, not just masks, uh, especially jeans, it works on jeans really well. You know, you have all that fabric in there. I think eight layers is put in the inseam. But if you push that button one time, it will level the presser foot and let it glide over those humps. So I don't know if you sell these, Barbara, or not, but. Oh yeah, so most machines that you purchase these days do already come with that foot. Right. Um, just have it recognized that there's a black uh, button on it that you can press, which levels it. Up. So like when you're going over like all that bulky material, your foot's going like this, and it's not putting right. even pressure on the fabric. So pressing that button, Brings it back to where it needs to be to glide across the top. I love exactly. it. Good tip. I love this. And it's such a simple thing. It's like, you know, when you look at it, you're like, how does that work? <laughs> but it works. What is that button for? <laughs> What's that button for? <laughs> All right. And then you see how easy it was to put it back? Just snap on. Okay, so at this point, I like to cut all my threads. Because there are a few of them. Um, in my machine, I know I have one at the top where I started and one at the bottom where I started, so I'll cut those and I kind of look for other ones. I don't have to worry about the shorter ones, but um, I just don't like a lot of threads. So when I teach classes, I'm always saying, clip the threads, clip the threads. <laughs> at this point, you just turn it inside out. You got two openings, doesn't matter which end. Turn it out. Inside out, and you're starting to see your mask form. I love this magical part of sewing, <laughs> where you go right? backwards <laughs> and then it also comes together somehow. That's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Except for when it doesn't work out, then it's not my favorite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your beginning of your mask, or almost the end of your mask. Here we go. Thank you, Barbara. There's your mask. There's your lining. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can shift you to the ironing board. I have my mini makeshift ironing board next to me here with my mini iron. Um, and I think Barbara's putting a link up for that. It's the Steam with Fast the Mini Iron. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I was like, I think we sell that one. <laughs> So what do you like about that iron? Because um, you were just raving about it to me before. I like that it's small. 
I, mm -hmm. I love that it has steam because a lot of mini irons don't always have steam. So this one has steam, a steam function. So I love that about it. Um, and I don't know, I just, I like the size for my hand. It's steamy now because it thinks it's over something. Let's be careful. Uh, yeah, when you hold it down, it just steams automatically. So I like that about it. But I really just like the size of this. It. Nice when I'm doing small projects, I don't have to get up and go to the ironing board, set up the ironing board and all that jazz. I can just do this on my little mini board. My yeah. mini board, that is $29.99 on our website. So I included a link below for everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we are getting questions about the machine, but I'm going to save that to the last because that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> okay. Okay. My little workhorse here. <laughs> the, the mini the mini ironing board is, is kind of a funny story. It used to be a TV tray that I was using for something else in my room. I forgot uh, some years ago. And I accidentally sat on it one day and broke the legs off the TV tray. <laughs> and just as I was about to toss the whole thing in the garbage, I thought, wait, I'll just make that a little mini ironing board. I'll keep the top with the legs away and make a mini ironing board. And it just happens to fit perfectly. It's actually sitting on top of an open drawer. <laughs> <laughs> and Rhonda so, said that yeah. she has one of those in her iron collection as well. Yes, she <laughs> does. She has in her iron collection. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so when you press this, um, you don't. You want to make sure that you don't see the lining from the wrong side, from the right side of your mask. You don't want to be walking around with this leopard print mask with this red lining peeking out. You don't want that. So you're going to roll it back. So let me see if I can move you over just a little bit to the iron. I think I can. Okay. Yep. You need me to there try. I am. Let me know. And I Sonia think, has one, good. and she hasn't used it. She said she's oh, no, it's it for years. <laughs> you need to put that thing to use, Sonia. You do. <laughs> great little irons. Okay, so watch me use it, and you'll get it out of the box. <laughs> so I already have it. I have it. It's already hot. It has steam in it. It has water in it, so it's going to steam for me. So can you guys see there? A little bit. Yes, we can see. Everybody okay. let us know. So here's a trick to this mask. Elizabeth you know how we said, make... Sorry, the red is hot. It is hot. I agree. <laughs> like it will make you look hot wearing that mask. Like I feel so pretty in public when I wear this mask. So, yes, I feel hot. <laughs> So when I make masks, I usually wear a mask to protect the mask. So this one will be mine. <laughs> That's my excuse, right? <laughs> so here's a little trick. So we're going to press this all the way from one end to the other end. You know how when you see things that have drawstrings in them and sometimes that little edge of that fabric is sticking out of the end? Here's a trick to make sure that doesn't happen. And the mask will kind of lead you because it's kind of want to fold itself that way. So you don't want to fold this perfectly straight to press it. You want to let it go in just a little bit on an angle. And then the same thing when you get to the other side. When you get to the top, it's going to want to fold in even more. Just let it let it do its thing. You know how sometimes we listen to our fabric, right? And we do what our fabric wants, what the fabric wants to do, and we get better results. So this is one of those cases. So I'm just finger pressing this to show you how that's angled in versus being straight. So let me press it and I'll come back. That is a really cool tip. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It is. Because if you look at the bottom of yours, you can't see that where your, where your tie is in, you can't see that fabric sticking out. Look, here's mine. I've yeah. worn it, so if there's makeup on it, I'm sorry. <laughs> But yes, it is perfect the way that like not coming uh, or showing any of the inside of it. Right. And so to make sure you don't, I haven't finished ironing yet, but to make sure you don't show the red on the outside, see how I roll that in just a little bit? Yes. Right there. That's so smart. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and like you're talking that. about uh, wearing a mask when you make your mask. So one thing that yes, I, do I do when I am making masks for people, which I know that you'd sell these as well, but you guys should be sewing. 
your own masks if you have a sewing machine. Um, I use pine saw to wash mine, and then I put gloves on and then put them in a Ziploc bag. And I noticed that when you sent me, me mine, it was in a, in a, in a bag. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, that's well, I always I, use them in bags. Yeah. And I use my yeah. and I have, because that helps kill bacteria as well. It does. And I think I put a little note in there that talked about that. I usually do. When I ship them, I put a note in that talks about, you know, hand washing. You can hang to dry. You can put it in the machine to dry. You can hit it with a shot of steam, but, you know, you know, things that you can do. So I press the bottom, and here's our bottom. You see where you can see a little bit of the leopard on the red, but you don't see the red on the leopard. That's the goal. And so I'm going to press the top the same way. So you just finger roll it back just a little bit. And a little bit is like a, a sliver. It's not even measurable. Okay, so uh, Zenny Garcia asked, she said, I've used the same material that Carrie uses in the template and I was wondering if you can use it in the scan and cut. Um, I haven't personally done it, but challenge accepted. <laughs> I will try right. that. Some people, some people have done it. Oh, cut it on the scan and cut? Okay. Yeah, it, yeah. They've either cut the pattern on the scan and cut or they've cut their fabric on the scan and cut. But what about that template material that you're using? This plastic? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to test that for you, Zenny. Um, or if you probably, have it, probably you let us have know. Um, it, the worst thing that will happen is it won't cut all the way through. <laughs> and then that way, and I've made my own templates before, um, but I didn't use the scan and cut. Like, um, I'll show you. I've, I've used um, like plastic that you buy from like Home Depot to make templates. And then oh. I can, um, you score it, which I guess on a curve you can't score like yours, but straight ones you can score it and then... Um, use a file to make it smooth so that you don't there's no jagged edges but good question try to figure out the <laughs> answer to that for you <laughs> okay so the top is iron same thing you can't see the red but on the inside you can see just a little bit of the i mean literally it's a sliver of the leopard print so you don't want to roll that back too much just a little bit and now this is what you have. You're here. So now what I do is I take this in and I fold it in three eighths of an inch. And then I fold the rest all the way up to the lining. So no measuring. <laughs> and a little bit. Like <laughs> I like and that. Because, and because you angle that top and bottom, it won't be exact there. So you don't want that. You want that rolled in, folded in. And the same thing at the bottom. You got less of a fold at the bottom, but yeah. Let's see yours. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, and I like to, while I'm at the ironing board, I like to iron that. So I do the three eighths and then roll it over to meet the lining and then press it. But all while I'm here. Same thing on the other side. Three eighths and a nice roll to, up to the lining. And that's actually your casing now for your drawstring or ties or whatever you use. So it's gonna look like that. Let's roll right up to that. And then you're gonna sew it. Now this time you wanna sew again from the wrong side so you can see because you don't want to make the mistake of sewing from the right side and not being able to see where your lining is. And then you sew your lining clothes and then you'll, you won't have a drawstring. Sorry. <laughs> or you won't have a casing. So be careful of that. So again, from the wrong side. And even though this little piece here doesn't meet the top, I want to sew from the top because that's going to all show on the, on the right side of the mask. So I'm going to sew all the way from the top. And then when I get here, I'll do a little back stitch there to lock it, to lock it in. Just uh, two stitches or one stitch there to lock it. And then I continue to the other end. So 
So let's do that. Jill says, and Jill, you always say fun things on the video. So I appreciate you watching with us again. Um, <laughs> she asked Philip Olchie the other week if he slept in his, uh, in his, um, he was steaming a vest or something. And she said, did you sleep in that? And it was really funny. But she says, nice things. <laughs> and yes, I agree. And Kira says that she likes to use her Jiffy steamers before she uh, puts the mask into uh, the bag. She purchased it from all brands. So yes, we sell a lot of J Jiffy steamers. Thank you for your business, Kira. We really appreciate that. That's a good, that's a good idea. So Maya will get one more steam before the end. Um, so here I haven't even seen the face of the mask yet, just the edges here. But we are going to, looks like we're ready on camera. We are going to sew this. And again, go all the way from the top. And then when you get to that part that's folded over, you can back stitch. And then I'll just go down to the bottom, just making sure that your lining doesn't get caught. If you if it looks like it's going to get caught, just pull it out of the way. So this is basically an edge stitch at this point. That's that side. That's what it looks like from the right side. If you can see those red stitches there, maybe. Maybe not. I have a question, Carrie. And yes, sure. beautiful. I, I actually like the um, bold stitching. Um, do you have a certain um, stitch length that you prefer to use whenever you make masks? This is, uh, I just stick with um, 2 point, mine is 2.4, some are 2.5, but I stick to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't felt a need to change it. And I made some denim ones a few days ago. I'll show you those later. Um, and I didn't feel like I needed to change the stitch. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm sewing slower than normal. <laughs> I usually push this machine to its limit. <laughs> Yeah, that machine is pretty fast. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us the model number that you're sewing on? This is the HZL, always forgives the HLC, HZL F400. I actually won this machine. Okay. I won, I won it in 2008, I think. And it's been my primary machine ever since. When I oh. lifted it out of the box, just lifting it, I knew it was going to be my primary machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That, that motor in there. And okay. it's only been repaired twice. It's been, it gets serviced every year, but it's only been repaired twice. And once it was me, I broke the needle threader. I got a jam or something and I broke the needle threader. And then the last time, like a quirky thing that had happened that they actually knew about. So I didn't have to pay for that repair. Uh -huh. And that just happened, I think last year. So yeah, it's, it's a workhorse. It's a good machine. It's a very solid machine. So again, I'm just cutting my threads here, get rid of all this stuff that I don't want. So now your mask looks like this, I'll fold it in half. And there's that, um, let's see if I can get this through. There you go, there's the red stitching there. And that's actually your casing now. So the other thing I like to do is uh, my very first mask that I made like this, I didn't top stitch them. And I think it was my granddaughter that had hers on and I could see the lining. And so I started top stitching them at that point. And I actually like the look better. And that keeps that lining down too. Yeah, I find <clears throat> that when you wash it, it tends to not shift as much when you top stitch it. Right. It does add just, another step to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I guess it's optional. Right. So I'm gonna sew from that stitch, not over here at the edge because you'll close up your Casing, so don't close your case. You start it at that stitch. Sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, there we go. So, okay. here I'm gonna start from here and come over this way because if you start from here from the end, you're gonna close up your casing. So, just be cautious of that. Raise your hand if you've done that before. 
Yes. <laughs> I did it on my scrum cap the first time and I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> seam rippers. <laughs> So here I'm using the edge of my presser foot as my guide. There's my seam allowance for this top stitch. Um, but you can do, it's about three eighths of an inch. So if you need to measure, you can measure. If you need to mark, you know, if you need to mark these things, do it, whatever you need to do. If you need to put more pins in than I did, go ahead and do that. But as you continue to make them, you'll just get better at it and you won't need all that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a lock stitch. I don't want to back stitch because I want to see all those stitches on the top of the mask. So I'll just do a couple stitches and then I'll do one stitch back. So that's my lock stitch. And then I'll just guide this along the edge of the presser foot. Again, we're on a curve. I'm doing the top first. And again, it's the curve, so you don't want to let this pivot into a point here. You just want to go around this curve. Let's see that the fabric up. This makes it make it nice, one gentle curve. And then again, you're gonna stop at that stitching for your um, casing. Don't sew that close. And then a lock stitch. I'm starting to understand now, looking at my mask. Um, this is the top stitch that she just did, and it's yes. there. And right. and then when I'm looking at it from the top, I can totally see how you took the lining and kind of shifted it in a little bit so that it didn't show uh -huh. on the top. <laughs> Oh, how I rolled it in? Yes. Yeah. Now Sharon. the bottom of this, you have questions? No, nope. Sharon just said, nice mask. <laughs> thank oh, you. Thank you. I think I got a phone call there. Um, so the bottom, I don't do the edge of the foot. I do about a quarter inch. And I've done, I tried a half inch. Or, the, or using the edge of the presser foot as a guide, and it was too much because this little curve right here fits under the chin. And I think if you sew up too far, then you interfere with that fit under your under your chin. So I wouldn't right, do more Jill. than a quarter inch. I'm sorry, Jill's got her fun comment for the video. She said, Fancy, you need to wear it with your black high heels. <laughs> now we have red high heels. Red I pom. have red heels. <laughs> yes, and they are so super cute. <laughs> I may take a picture in all of this <laughs> and post it. <laughs> Zinni asks if they can put a wire in the nose. We are going to talk about that in just a second. But yes, you absolutely can without any changes to the pattern whatsoever. So I'm doing about a quarter inch or a little bit less than a, closer to an eighth of an inch. But again, I wouldn't go more than a quarter inch. Actually, I am sewing a quarter inch here, sorry. And now I got those four layers at this little point that may or may not go over it. And I'm gonna make sure my lining stays rolled back. And I'm going to use this little black button. I won't take any chances. I'll just use it. And there it goes. Or not. Yeah, there it goes. And again, stop at the at your stop at your casing line. Get rid of your threads, all that stuff. And believe it or not, at this point your mask is finished except for the ties. That was fast, huh? Yes. So, so the difference in putting the nose guard in 
is you don't need to change the pattern itself at all. You just need to change the way you sew. So you would, um, where I folded the seam allowances opposite directions on the lining and the fabric, you would iron them, or not a finger press them, you would finger press them or press them in the same direction because you need to have the opening for your guard. And so what I like to do is the, the top stitching. Obviously, you have to make it a little bit bigger depending on what size nose guard you have or nose wire you have. But you would, you could make, you could do it two ways. You could make your top stitching all the way across, insert your nose guard, get it centered, and then sew lines here and here to encase it. So those lines would go down. So you'd have like a little, almost a little box there. But the key is that the seam allowances are folded the same direction so that that wire can get in there. Um, the other way is you could place the wire and maybe pin around it um, and then just sew just that and skip the top stitching. But I really do like the look. Once I started doing the top stitching, I like the look of the top stitching. So any questions on the nose guard? None yet. Uh, we're just okay. getting uh, really nice. <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> Harry, I have to say, before, <laughs> because I've given away all the other masks that I've made so far, and I had this one left over. That I was like, oh, well, that one fell out the box, you know, so uh, I guess I'll wear that one when I go out. And I just was not feeling very confident in this mask. And now I feel <laughs> like a beautiful woman whenever I wear this. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the guys like them, too. Uh, and I have had to make it larger for the guys. And just so you know, I don't have a pattern for that. Or I didn't make a creative pattern for it for you guys. For the guys, you don't change the size of the mask. If they have a bigger face or a big, I had one that had a bigger head, not a bigger face. And his wife was insisting that I made it larger and it actually worked out for him. You, you want to just kind of taper out about a half to a quarter inch. I wouldn't go more than a half. Just taper out here. Don't change the size at the bottom. Don't change the size at the top. Don't change the, don't change any of this. Just give them more nose room, and that will actually give them more face and head room without changing this. Don't change this point or the bottom point. Just go out a little bit. And then for the kids, um, it's actually exactly five-eighths of an inch smaller all the way around. So the kid, you would change the size. You just bring it down um, five-eighths of an inch, so about here. Not to be here. And just That's the size you would cut, and that's completely around. But when you do that, make sure you leave. Let me get the other one here. Make sure you leave this one inch here. This is one inch. Make sure you leave that because, again, you remember you need to roll that in and it needs to fit the, the lining. So when you make the mark for your lining on the kids' one, make sure it's one inch from there to there. So okay. I'm not going to make you watch it. I'm not going to make you watch me put a tie in, <laughs> but the reason Barbara can wear hers around her neck or you can wear yours around your neck and just let it hang off is the direction that I go. So I like to put my tie in from the top. And when you put the tie in from the top, you go from the top to the bottom. And then there's your neck loop right there. And then come back out through the other side of the top. If you go from the bottom up, then two things are missing. You can't hang it on your neck, or you can't look weird, uh, but it won't be adjustable. You won't be able to pull it and make it snug on the side of your face, under your chin. None of that will happen if you, if you do it that way. Let me back my camera up a little. Carrie, I, I got frozen, and I had to jump oh. out and jump back in, so sorry. <laughs> I missed it. What? What did you say? What kind of material this is that you're using? So I used a lot of things when I started. I used what I had. So I had grow grain ribbon. I was using that. I didn't use regular ribbon because I knew it wouldn't last. I used some trim that looked like ribbon. <laughs> I was using all sorts of stuff because I couldn't get elastic. And so once I started using those things, I decided I didn't want to use elastic. This is uh, tool tape. This is half inch wide tool tape. 
beautiful thing. And I have it in black and white. I couldn't get the white, the off white in a in tool tape or in a half inch. So I have some quarter inch off white. Yeah. It will work just as well. Yeah. And it's kind of got like a texture to it. So I maybe yes. it rips it so it doesn't like fall out. Like if it was a satin ribbon, I could imagine that. It yeah. It's, it's actually cotton because it's cotton. It's cotton against cotton. Okay. So it gives a little, creates a little yeah. tension. It's great. Jenny, so, thank you for watching. She asked, what's the length of the tie? Oh, I'm sorry, this is 55. It okay. seems long and it looks long, but again, it allows you to tie it either behind your neck, a little higher on the back of your head, or on top of your ponytail or your bun, or I've even seen some people tie it on top of their hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to put on. It's changed my uh, my life when I leave my house now. So thank you, <laughs> Carrie, for this great design. Yeah, and when you put it on, you'll have a loop in the back. If you thread your tie from the top to the bottom, your loop will be in the back. And then you'll just put it around the back of your neck. Well, Barbara did that. You can show us, Barbara. Show us how to put it on. Oh, OK. Let's see. <laughs> Let me back up. So. OK, so tell me if I'm doing it right, because I could totally like, not. OK, so I just kind of like so, I cuff it on my chin real quick. Instead so of take it off. Like just take so it off entirely. Take it all the way off. And now I'll put it on. Show them how it goes on around okay. the neck. So I, there's like a loop. This is the top of the mask. And then there's a loop at the bottom. So I just kind of like, you can just like pull it out as much and like put it around your neck. And then right. I kind of like grab these and bring it in. Is that right? And then right. I use my chin as a lever, leverage to just go like that. Is that right? Yep, that's I right. It, I wear it like this because I, I feel like it gets under my ear. Yes. And that holds it up pretty well. And then I just yeah. tie it in a bow. And there's plenty yep. of extra. So if you want to be real conservative with the length, um, I could, I don't know. I don't know if I have a much bigger head than most, but I guess you got to accommodate you yeah, know. I've asked for feedback from people about the length of them, and they like they like the length because they can adjust it and put it up higher or whatever they want. Yeah, so fifty five inches, right? Fifty five inches, and the kids is forty two. Oh my gosh! If you make a child's mask, it's forty two inches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I love this. Thank you so much, Carrie. So then all we do at the end is we just fold it in half and give it a good press and give it a shot of steam. And if you're packaging, package it almost right away as soon as it cools down. Yeah. And you know what I did? Because I didn't, like, I was in a rush and I was like, oh, I can't, I don't have time to wash it. I took it <laughs> to my steam iron and I got this. And y'all, we, this stuff is so great. I talk about it all the time because I love it. But we have this, like, starch spray by um, uh -huh. Flatter. Have you heard of that before? No. Um, they, they come in like scents and stuff. So like I sprayed it and then I steamed it and that um, helps to sanitize it, which is nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's a great idea. So yeah. let me just show you a couple more that I made. So this is a denim one and it has the same lining that Barbara's has in it. But you can see the top stitching there really good. I didn't know you could see it that well, but there you can see it. And then this is just a fun print that I've been playing around with. Not sure if it's going anywhere, but. <laughs> Where that's kind of like fun. a party. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. It's cool. This is one I just did. I did studs. I love that. Yeah, I added all those by hand. So I only made two of those. <laughs> I might make more, I don't know. But this is studs on denim, so it's been thicker. And I wasn't sure if the cotton would hold up to the studs. So I thought to do denim instead. But again, it's the same lining on the inside. Oh my gosh. And Wide leg jean pants would look so cute. <laughs> and this oh is the African print. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, the guys seem to like this one. Mm -hmm. And that same lining. I had a lot of this lining, a lot. <laughs> and then this one I just did yesterday. 
So it still has the two layers. It's a layer of white cotton and then the layer of lace on top. (laughs) Yeah. And then I use a kind of cute, almost matching lining on the inside. When you make these masks, you really should not make them reversible. You should make them, the lining different from the outside so that you don't put it on incorrectly by mistake because here's all your contaminants here and you don't want to make a mistake and put it on the wrong way. Yeah. So that's why all my linings are different from the outside. I love the red. Oh my The God. red leopard? <laughs> Yo, which one's your favorite? Chime in in the comments below. Oh my <laughs> that's hard to say, but I think my favorite- You have choices. <laughs> I like the crazy disco looking one. I actually love them all. The one with the circle? It's hard to pick, but that one's like definitely like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's extreme. I love it. Well, the good thing is I put the I put the circles on the side so they're not on your nose. <laughs> yeah. I love your style. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, these are fun to make. Yeah. And then I have some that I have to uh, match up the, the prints. And that's in the cutting. You can't do it afterwards. You have to do it when you cut. And just what I did on one of them, I don't know if it's this one or not, <clears throat> but you can just make a mark somewhere on the pattern <clears throat> for your matching point. Just a little dash is fine. That'll work. Just put it there. And then, you know, that's kind of your center point. And then that's when you make sure those patterns match. Like I have some plant fabric that uh, someone wants a mask out of, and I'll have to use that, put a mark there and use that. So we got some uh, we got some votes in for favorites. Uh, let's see. Lauren said that she likes the studded denim and lace and the lace uh-huh. mask. Are- <laughs> the hard and the soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Depending on how you're feeling. <laughs> I mean, for your guy, for you. <laughs> <laughs> and Reen likes the black and white one. So I guess that's the lace one. The lace one. I like yes. all the colorful ones. And it's just a lace overlay. I still have the cotton under there. And I just put the lace on top, sewed it all together. I wasn't thinking when I first did it. And I sewed the lace separate and then the the fa- cotton fabric separate. And then you can see the seam. Oh, so it's so actually up, lace. It's actually lace. Oh, I thought it was print. Let me no, it's lace. Screen. It's lace on top of cotton. I love that. <laughs> Lauren says, a girl needs options. And I agree. <laughs> yes. 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 So now that we did like all of the ones that of the, just because we had to, now we do the ones to, so that we can look fine when we leave the house. <laughs> yes. And it's like a piece of jewelry hanging off of your shirt. <laughs> Renee likes the animal print. I think I'm, you know, you know. The leopard I especially print. love the animal print one. Yeah. <laughs> and Rhonda, it is a says fun. You, you have to wear a matching mask for each outfit you wear to leave home here in the South, LOL. And yes, it's been so hot here. Like every time I leave the house, I have to wear like multiple clothings per day <laughs> because it gets so <laughs> sweaty. Oh my gosh. One for So I wore... I wore a teal t-shirt last week to to our food pantry to work there. And when I get, got ready to walk out the door, I didn't have a mask to match it. So I'm like, oh, so when I came home that night, I made one to match it. Oh, <laughs> I love that you do that. <laughs> so I need one to match this. Again. You made the shirt? So, yeah, my top. So I need I need one to match it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ew. Such a but this is a knit, so oh, I don't have a- more fabric. But oh, I'll have to find something with these colors in it. <laughs> so let's talk about next Thursday. I know that we just kind of like jumped on that, but um, okay. can we look at the garment? That um, Yeah. I think we're frozen, Barbara. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me turn around. There she is hanging out there. Oh my goodness. Bobby says, love, love the studded denim. So you know what I love about Hey Bobby. Bobby's my childhood friend. Oh great. We reconnected. We reconnected last year. 
and now she's in my group. <laughs> oh, great. I love that how flattering this is. That cut is just so perfect. And you know what it would be great with? Mask. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the good thing about princess seams is that they <clears throat> they are flattering on most people, on uh, almost everybody. And I actually learned that. I can't think of her name now, uh, but a well-known sewist. She's now deceased. But I, I walked up to her one day at the event. I said, do you really think, and I was much heavier. And I said, do you really think this body can wear that? Because she did everything in princess seams. And she goes, honey, everybody can wear princess seams. Oh. And I started wearing them. And I thought, I think she's right. <laughs> And I love that, but it the gives other good that bold pop of color is really cool. Yes, it's yes, and you can play around with your prints and put them wherever. Let me see if I can turn it around just a little bit. So, um, on Thursday at three thirty, <laughs> yeah, now you can see joining the other us side. again, and she's going to be modifying this uh, pattern on the video. So you'll learn a little bit about how to change a pattern to add a princess scene. And I, am I right, Carrie? No, you're not. <laughs> We're gonna use oh, uh, okay. any, any princess scene pattern that you have. Okay. Yeah, any princess scene pattern that you have, whether it's a top or a dress or whatever. And we'll talk about how to bring all those scenes together. Because what's interesting is I think sometime around the time I was making this, I pinned it backwards and I posted it in my group and I said, oh, look what happened. And nobody understood what I what was wrong with it because they didn't understand the princess scene. But the, the nice thing about the princess scene, you have all these scenes. Um, let me turn back to me. So this top actually has princess scenes on it. I don't know if I can stand up, but you have all these scenes. So you have scenes here that go around your bus and out and curve out. And they don't always have to curve out. The dress that I asked this lady about was a straight dress, but it was princess things. Um, but on the peplum, it would curve out. So those, and then you have the same seams on the back in most cases. In this case, I actually don't. I did a flat back with a little bit of a tail. But here, this is a great, uh, I don't know how I want to say it, a great seam that you can use to alter your patterns, either up or down. It's easier than altering darts, actually. They, this princess seam serves as a dart, but it serves almost like a full body dart. And so it's so easy to, to alter that. You do all the alterations before you put your sleeves in, obviously. But you can bring them in. You can let, if I wanted this to fit tighter, I would grab that princess seam, like right in here, and make it tighter or looser, whatever you want. But it's so easy to make alterations with those seams. I think I'm going to go like, big in my closet. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to upcycle some shirts and add some princess seams to them because that's so cute. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, next week we'll be talking mostly about the princess seam itself versus actually making the garment. Yeah. But, yeah. Michelle says she can't wait to see how the shirt is made. <laughs> and neither can I. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh my goodness. We did it. We yeah. did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carrie, for joining us. Uh, you guys, I, if you want to follow Carrie um, on social media, um, on her Facebook and blog, Endless Designs by Carrie is her company. And yes. she teaches beginning and intermediate sewing classes. And she's a yeah. philanthropist. Um, so if you'd like to get involved, learn more, uh, definitely, um, get in touch with Carrie and, and join her groups. And, uh, she has a lot, a lot of knowledge that she can share with everyone. So we really appreciate you joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So next Thursday, 30, is it a date? Is it 3.30 or 6.30? 3.30. 3.30, yes. yes. It's a date. It's a date. We'll be back. 30, uh -huh. <laughs> Get up that early. <laughs> Lauren says, enjoyed hanging out with y'all. Uh, thank you. Says, Great life, Carrie and Barbara. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Rain.
We'll see y'all. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> okay. See you we'll see week. you on Thursday. <laughs> next Thursday yeah. at 3.30. Looking right. forward to it. All right, everybody. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Mwah.